I'm very happy that I can announce presentation by Bartosz Urbaniak. Bartosz, come up here, head of food and agrobanking at PNB Paribas for Central and Eastern Europe and Africa. Uh, together. Fit for Green Deal. We were watching uh, the Kristina Chubovna uh, video. It's important for us to make these steps. It's not only EU legislation, it's something else, right? Yes, exactly. Everybody referred to Peter, so he has stolen my show, I'm afraid. But I made new notes, so I hope I'll make it. But it's not just an agreement, and it's not that we will spend some money, but as we understand it, there are a lot of fears about it, and also we all understand the sense of urgency, that it's much more than just a trade agreement, it's not more than just spending money, we need to change everything. It's kind of controlled revolution, I think. Okay, we are all ears. Over to you, Bartosz. Yeah, Peter made this great show, so I have this new shortcut. Well, actually, uh, the previous agro conference pre pandemic, we were here three years ago. It was some kilometers from here, and then I was asking, well, maybe it's time for the need to change a paradigm, a paradigm where we would uh, we, we lived in, so more, more expensive, quicker. Then when I asked this question, the audience went silent. I don't think we were ready to even discuss it. But now, when I looked at uh, responses um, on social media, how our discussion is being commented, nobody is really surprised by that. We see more people talking that profit is not all, that we need to think about the world in different perspective. Maybe it would take longer, more responsible. And I believe we have also understood that uh, it's not about being simple, it's not an answer to everything. My colleague says that if you can't describe it, then it means that it's complicated. And we believe that the world is complicated. It can be explained by three or four sentences, words. No, not anymore. The Green Deal, out of the discussions we had here, we know that it's a complicated response or story to how to get out of the trouble we are in. The truth is, the Green Deal is complicated. We have the same slides which shows that we have similar sources. So it's a kind of a proposal. It's not an agreement, not yet, but it's a political a proposal, a cultural proposal, social and economic proposal. If you read the definition of the Green Deal, is to be the change of functioning of the economy of the member states of the European Union, which is something that we, in the Central Eastern European perspective, we should really uh, put a lot of notice to that. As we have not tried it, the big European Union wants to do something together. Well, the, the um, individual countries joined the European Union. We had old member states, new member states, countries which were more involved and countries which were less involved. And now it is something which we can do together, all of us, which means that everybody will have the status quo uh, changed, which is why the Green Deal is not not liked by anybody, as it makes everybody to make an effort. There is no one who can simply sit down in an armchair smoking cigars and watching whether they will pass the exam or not. No, we are doing it, all of us, together. 
It's the tough part. The good part is that the Green Deal sounds as a, a proposal or an offensive. I heard it for the first time from the uh, chairwoman. I didn't think it was possible, but the Green Deal is a breakthrough which will help us to regain the role of the global leader to, the, to Europe, to the European Union, someone who wants to impose kind of a standard, good standard, which would, uh, which would change the world into the better, when the European Union and our community will become a political leader. Well, obviously, those who criticize Europe, they say that it's not necessary, but you need to remember that the administration of China or the US, they are not lagging behind. What is unique with us is that the Green Deal is the first one. The other countries, the other economies, they work on quite similar agenda trying to set it out. And I will add one thing because we are not having it now. I'm not going to talk about farm to folk who, after so many people who explain the fears and opportunities connected about it, but one introduction maybe, why agriculture is so important in the case of the Green Deal. Well, one thing is, which is worth repeating, no agro, no food. And it is something which we need to remember, really. The other thing is that the agriculture is probably the only mass industrial or manufacturing activity which can and may have positive impact on climate. We kept talking about the dark side of the agriculture, that it uses a lot of water, water up to 70 percent, that it is responsible for a lot of emissions of gases in Europe, it's several percentage in the world, it's 30 percent of all the uh, green gases, they come from um, agriculture, but agriculture, those of you who are not good pupils during the biology lessons, it can capture, and it's the only business of this kind, it may capture coal, mineral coal from the uh, from the green gases, and it may transform it into organic coal, which is the source of life. It may store coal because cellulose is at the coal, so the leaves or parts of tree, it may capture pollution and store it or transform it into the future sources of life. We can do it in a different way. In Intech, in startup, we have uh, no technology that could be doing it, and um, agriculture can do it. So we need to get back to the uh, light site of the of the agri agriculture. So if you have so many opportunities, so why would all the previous uh, speakers see that many fears? Well, we've heard about Green Deal here, that it's a EU plan and the budget of 120 billion uh, euro annually. In a video we showed you, we, we were telling you that it's, uh, it's okay because the cost may be like 190 billion euro, Green Deal 120 billion to be spent. Why are we so much afraid of it? We heard in each of the statement kind of a fear. We were talking about risks. I'll get back to it, but I just want to... My I confused my slides. But now I want to highlight one thing additionally, and it's a perspective from Eastern Central Europe, which is quite important. This comparison we made. <coughs> Green Deal, on the one uh, hand, <coughs> we're talking about something which is uniquely abstract. 
fact or complicated. But to countries in this part of Europe, Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, it's the perspective to overcome uh, the same level of difficulties which you've already done. The number of uh, regulations which have to be implemented, the, sis the complicated system of supports, but also opening to new markets, regulatory changes. We've done it all when we, we've experienced it. And how to compare the scale. Maybe money will help us. The most important part when Poland will get associated with the EU, it was the common agriculture policy. When we joined the European Union, which was half that big, common agriculture policy it was 60 billion, and Green Deal is 120 billion. So realistically, having in mind the progress, intellectual, technological progress, we are talking about the similar uh, scale of complication. It's feasible. And we, in this part of Europe, we can send the signal. We can do it. At least some uh, part of the European Union coped with equally complicated matter. Some concerns. You see a graph from uh, 17 years ago when Poland would join the European Union. And then we had a lot of concerns, overwhelmingly uh, important concerns. We knew that there would be a lot of money. We knew that a lot would change. And now each of the poll who is here, we may say that we live in a completely different uh, country than we have 17 years ago, culturally, socially, compared to what we had then. Where concerns had been raised, over 80% of farmers, we have this here 69, but I remember that 80% of farmers was against it. Now you see the result if we measured it by money. It's 13 times more. If we looked at it from the income perspective, here you see money that someone has earned, but talking about welfare, of how much you make, well, we make only three times more now, 13 times more growth on the sold revenue and three times more in profit for individual, but still we are afraid. And now you see these two gentlemen who explained um, this concern. This is the uh, prospect theory by Kahneman and Tversky. They've been awarded by Nobel Prize for that. And here is the simplest, um, simplest explanation why we are afraid, because that's the way it is. And we experience the loss uh, uh, experience uh, most. Well, you might have lost something like the 100 uh, zloty banknote or 100 euro, and we may remember it forever. But the fact that we have found something in the meantime, you don't remember that so well. So the, uh, the uh, prospect of losses is experienced heavier. And this is why the Green Deal is not that much um, accepted. The second perspective is that the Green Deal promises something which is going to happen, but not as compensation for something possible, for, for the possible loss of what we now have. And the third thing is, and it's under um, appreciated. It's something which we have in many cultural codes. What we have to um, gain is almost nothing. So I treat you like an heir, like nothing. And we will be gaining an heir. And I know some languages, and this thing of heir is nothing. It's not just the Polish cultural code. In many cultural codes, heir is perceived as nothing. And also, um, it's not very popular because it's complicated. And we have this saying that before the truth goes out, the gossip will circulate the world. The same goes for the opponents of the Green Deal. It's not rapid, while the opponents are rapid. And the final aspect is 
that what is at risk where we have some concerns for some losses then this it was in all the this presentation we had here is that profit and money are threatened the direct profitability will be at risk we heard it from Przemek Dański, from Professor Hausner or Peter well the profits money they it's threatened Money is loud and easy, countable, so it behaves like a redneck. It makes a lot of noise. The question is whether the money will bring us happiness. It's one of the everlasting questions of uh, humanity. We have a graph on it. And just look at it. If you have this uh, line from zero, and everything which is below, this is worsening of happiness, and if you are above uh, zero, then it's uh, growing happiness. Some comments maybe. It's not that we don't know how to do graph, but it's about change. And so Kuwait does not have negative uh, GDP, and Romania is not the most uh, most uh, rich country in the world. No, it's about the change in the most in the recent years. So you may notice that there are countries which uh, benefited and there are countries which lost on GDP. Do you see any logics in it? Who's happier, who's uh, less happy? I think there is no uh, relevance whatsoever. We don't have it here, don't see it here, which means that you can say, although we have agro conference, we have here the proof that money does not bring happiness. If we now go back to this graph, which we looked at so proudly, it's from 2004 to 2000. 14. As you see, the growth was really impressive. The GDP growth in Poland was from 8,000 uh, to 35,000 per capita. Do you know how much the life expectancy grew at that time? Only several months. If we now looked at the same years in the case of France or Germany, they had a similar growth in GDP per capita. 10 plus uh, percent. Uh, in the case of Poland, it was 100 plus percent. But the life expectancy, again, several months. Nothing really changed. So I ask myself a question whether an impressive growth of GDP per capita made me more happy. I have a feeling that the question is no. When I look at uh, what happened before what we had in the past and what we have today, I live in the same place uh, for 25 years and when a neighbor asked me to help him, uh, then we took uh, the brush and we were painted this wooden house in the garden and we spent two days uh, together building our neighborly relations and we devastated the GDP. This um, activity is not included in the statistics, but when I look at it from the perspective of well-being, my well-being increased, the um, GDP not. So the question is, uh, Green Deal is also about this approach. Maybe this is time to give up measuring the world by GDP and look for other indexes showing what really impo what is really important like the life expectancy and the happiness index here you can't see relations uh, between the richer who are happier and the poorer are less so if you have been to Tajikistan uh, they are very happy and they have difficult life conditions um, and um, Going back a little bit to the summary of my presentation, whether we are going to succeed with Green Deal or not, this is also the perspective that uh, we are looking at.
One uh, thing I mentioned at the very beginning, uh, my neighbor uh, now can buy um, paint and um, hire people to do that for him, but he's not really very happy. So if we talk about neighbors, uh, I have a very religious and ecological wife. So we had seven uh, rubbish bins. We had the first, one of the first who had PV panels and electricity. Our uh, town is very progressive, so the mayor um, supported us significantly to get rid of uh, stoves. Uh, I was encouraging our neighbors uh, to um, to do that. Um, I also warned them that I'm going to report them if they burn the plastic. Uh, so they did that. They changed their approach. So right now, when we meet uh, during barbecue, so uh, now they say it's going to be an electric barbecue. They say, um, have you benefited from it? And they say, uh, it's more convenient. We are not counting really the money, but I don't have to do anything. The quality of life is totally different. So we need to be open in terms of different mindset, different approach to Green Deal. We can't really look at it only from the perspective of money. So, a car must be repaired, must be insured, it can be stolen, it can be damaged, or we can have this ticket and meet people, go around the city and drink uh, some alcohol and then we need to wait before we drive or just take a taxi. So this is just a different perspective. I need to speed up a little bit. Uh, do we have uh, another way to choose? I hope not. I hope that this is the center for managing Europe and the whole world. OK, so I'm just uh, uh, addressing uh, Peter. I hope you, your voice will be heard uh, in this forum. Um, there is no doubt. Uh, we also uh, heard that uh, during the previous conversations that this complicated uh, approach which needs coordination and strong leader that can implement all these objectives. Um, who can do that if not we in this forum? Then we also need to focus on cooperation. This is a graph. At the bottom, you can see uh, trust to legal system in a particular country, uh, and then two people on this vertical scale. So you can see member states of the European Union. So the Finnish trust to legal system and legal order and other people and uh, Poland or Bulgari uh, uh, may be perceived um, astonishingly. Uh, I am uh, Finnish by origin and I live in Poland, so um, if you don't understand me, it might result from my origin. This is an important issue. Uh, because we need to understand each other. We need to talk to each other and uh, work based on dialogue. And uh, last, or, 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 um, not last thing, the technology. Technology that we mentioned several times today and the next guest uh, also is going to talk about it probably. The technology is for us. We can't say the technological advance. We talked about Przemegdański. We have significant knowledge and we just uh, go through, uh, search the net to check really trivial things. So. The technology is there, and the technology is not really supporting us. Uh, the most uh, automatic system uh, that we have is a paper um, dispenser in the in the toilet, uh, the towel dispenser in the in the toilet. So this technology that is here, uh, that is measuring different things, must be must support us. And to summarize, Green Deal, this is money, significant money, but this is not about money to earn more. We need to spend this money to be able to change our world, to change our reality. Thank you very much.